Okay. Keep the cord in my pocket rather than having it go in front of the in front of the GoPro all day long. Good idea if this camera's actually gonna be able to see me. Everyone in the lunchroom thinks I'm crazy. Right. So I'm gonna walk at the bike, duck down by the speedometer, and say, "Hey, this is Ryan F9." And uh, hello, I'm Ryan F9, and we're gonna do some city riding. Is you. When you go to pass a truck, you do it fast. You don't want to stay in that blind spot for very long. So I'm coming up on a truck like this. I wait for there to be a bit of a gap ahead of me as this car goes. And then I slide through the danger point as fast as possible. Even better would be to choose a lane position over here so that I don't have to do that. In general, it's always a good idea to take this left lane position. One reason is because I only have to check one mirror. Now it's easier on me, I don't have to look here and here every few seconds, I'm just looking ahead, and then this mirror, and then ahead, and then this mirror, and then ahead, and then this mirror. You know, nobody's gonna sneak up on me on this side. The other reason I like the left lane is because there's nothing more dangerous than somebody who almost misses their exit, and then careens right in hopes of making it. You know, they'll cross like four lines of traffic in a heartbeat without really checking properly. Uh, if you stay in the left lane, you sort of stay out of that danger zone. The biggest thing about riding safely is just focus. I'm looking ahead, then I'm looking here, and then I'm looking here, and then I'm checking out what this guy's doing, and I'm, I'm seeing this guy turning. Is he gonna wanna come all the way left? Okay, no, he's just taking the middle lane. And uh, there's construction up ahead. The, the 720's closed, so a lot of people are gonna be jumping right in a hurry. So if I'm in a right lane, I might have to worry about that, etc., etc., etc. It's constant thinking, and it's a lot of mental effort, but after a while, you get used to it. Oh, did you hear that off-throttle gurgle? That's one of my favorite things about this bike is just the way that it burps. Let's see, I'll bump it, oh, bump it down to gear here first. And you rev it up, and then let off, wait for it. There it is. Woo, that sounds good. Oh, I couldn't have picked a better day for this. Sunny, cool, this is epic. Uh, let's go up to St. Cat's. With all these people, you know, one of the things when you're riding in a high danger zone like St. Catharines on a sunny day, just keep your thumb on the on the horn. You know, it's the biggest thing. If someone steps out in your pass, boom, you can honk at them. It grabs people's attention. Uh, if your thumb is off the horn, you'll never find it in time. You know, somebody will come out and you'll be like, ah, what do I do? And you'll end up like signaling left and then you'll hit them. The best thing to do is just just hold your thumb on the on the horn. When you're riding in traffic, when you're riding alongside pedestrians, it's good practice to pretty much do it all the time. Now, whenever there's a stop line of traffic, you have to be careful because everyone in here is going to want to get the hell out of this slow line. Um, and so when I'm riding along and I'm watching all these guys, their front tires specifically, it's going to be their first indicator. They'll turn their front tires and then they'll jump out to try to get ahead at a moment's notice. And I got to be ready for that. I know that I'm in a danger zone riding on the right hand side of a stop set of traffic. Just like I know that this lady with a UPS van stopped in front of her is going to want to get in here. And that's what people mean when they say sort of preempt what people are going to do. You don't have to see the future, you just have to see 15 meters ahead of you. Dancer! I want to say a lot of things about this bike, but the overall impression I have about the street rod is that it is freaking hot. This is an inappropriately hot place to sit. It's, it's like a volcano, it's like hell. It's, I don't even know what you, words to use to describe them because they all sort of fall short of what's happening to my ass right now. And I'm stopping, I'm flashing my brake light so the person behind me can see that we're slowing down, and they have, that's good. And I come up slowly to the car in front just so they don't get any funny ideas about rear-ending me. And then I leave lots of room and even angle my handlebars a little bit this way because if someone behind me doesn't stop, that's my escape route and that's where I'm going. This guy's checking out my Harley! You like my hog? You yeah, don't blame them. You know, a lot of motorcyclists just like get really hateful about car drivers. Like, oh, everyone on the road's trying to kill me all the time. It's like, no, they're not. You know, these are good people. For the most part, these are good drivers. Um, it's just everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. And as the vulnerable person, the onus is on me to make sure that I'm not at the butt end of one of those mistakes. That's it. There's no reason to get angry about it. Following distance is one thing I haven't talked about yet. Now the reason I'm staying about this far away from this car is not because I need that braking distance from him. You know, this street rod will easily outbreak that Chevrolet Astro. It's true. I mean, this thing has amazing brakes. They're actually way better than on pretty much any other Harley and way, way, way better 
then the Street 750 before it, which people be called it a beginner's bike, but really it was just downright dangerous. Um, the brakes, the suspension, the chassis couldn't keep up with what that engine was capable of, and it sucked. This bike can do it, so uh, much better. Anyway, I digress. The braking distance from this car is not my concern. It's the braking distance of whatever he might be driving over. Now see, occasionally, they do construction in Montreal. It happens now and then. Occasionally. And so, there may be a pylon in the middle of the road, or a tire, or a piece of tire, or whatever. It's a city. There's a lot of shit out here. And he could just drive right over it, sort of threading his wheels on either side of it. I don't have that same privilege, and so if I'm following squarely behind him, and pretty tight, like a second or a half second following distance, and all of a sudden, shit, there's something there, I'm not gonna have time to avoid it, so best to hang back. You well, know, the street rod is a city bike, but it's not sort of the smooth maitre d' in the tuxedo shepherding me along with his gloved hand. It's more the city bike in the sense of the the club bouncer who takes me into the back alley and roughs me up a little bit. Uh, the suspension is stiff, the torque is a bit jumpy, or I should say the fueling is a bit jumpy rather. Uh, it's fun to ride around town, but it's sort of an aggressive brawling type fun. Uh, it'd be a great bike for someone who enjoys a good fight. Uh, sound effects make me about three or four times safer. The other major impression I have of this bike is the tank. It's all wrong. This is a cruiser's tank. Anyone can tell that. Uh, it looks like the tank off a of Street 750 because it is the tank off a of Street 750. It's very wrong on this bike. It forces my knees into a stupid attack position. They're really wide apart. The ergonomics on here are a bit cramped. Um, Harley doesn't beat around the bush about it. They straight up said this bike is meant for people from five foot five to five foot nine, and that ain't me. Uh, so it is a little bit tight. You, oh, Tashiro, that's my exit. You know, one of the most common and well-known dangers in motorcycling is this. You're coming up to a left, or a solid green, rather, and someone over here is trying to make a left turn. They don't see, mo like this guy, he's making a left turn. For whatever reason, she may not see and register a motorcyclist and just go and turn right in front of me. So when I go through solid greens, I should be covering the brake with my finger, I should be covering the horn with my thumb, and I should be ready and planning how to do a panic stop, how to take evasive action, whatever that looks like. If I'm doing a panic stop, it's nice to have ABS. You know, somebody, uh, Illuminandi, once asked, you know, is it worth getting ABS, or should I just not get ABS and upgrade separately, or what? Well, you can learn excellent fast braking on your own. Uh, lever pressure is a good skill to have, so I would say don't feel obliged to get ABS, especially if you're riding off-road. It's actually beneficial not to have it. And even if you are riding on the road, like I said, it's good to learn the braking skill. Having said that, it is a safety feature, I think, for everybody to have ABS. No matter how good you are at modulating your own lever pressure and avoiding lockup and whatever, when you get into that panic braking scenario, are you really going to remember and think of that? If you've done it enough, maybe it's instinct. But even then, you know, something falls right in front of you, you grab the lever, maybe you lock it up, tuck the front and you go for a slide. If you have ABS, that's not gonna happen. And if you're wondering why I've left the island of Montreal, it's because I have to return this. Now this belongs to Harley Davidson, it's a press bike. And we shot a full review with it last week, I can link it down below if you wanna see that video. Uh, but for now, I've gotta give the thing back, and a part of me is sad about that. Um, not that I loved it, you know, the, the tank is stupid, the exhaust is stupid, they're both stolen from the 750 and they're all wrong here. Um, and it's an insanely hot place to sit. And the liquid-cooled engine is high revving and not at all what you'd expect or even want from a Harley. But a part of me is going to be sad to see this bike go because the finish is nice. And when you look at it from the side, you can just see the XR750 in there. Somebody, Erica Jane Archer, I think it was, asked, well, what would be your dream bike if you could buy only one? That's it. Maybe a 1972-ish XR750 flat tracker. I love it. Ah ha ha! You see that? You're home, my girl. And that is Leo Harley Davidson. This is a hell of a family reception, isn't it? Let's turn you off. Goodbye. And we'll turn you off.